All right, guys, so when you get your first uh, print, you might find out that you need in a lathe a piece that's 2.375 inches long and then 1.625 inches in diameter. So you're going to go and find a piece of material, or I'm going to give you a piece of material that's going to be slightly bigger than that. So just to verify, if I double-check this piece right here, I have in length about 2.450 or so, so that gives me about 75 thousands or so to take off roughly but I'm not getting trying to get a real accurate measurement because right now this side is all saw cut and so if I measure off of this it's not going to be an accurate measurement but as far as my diameter goes I'm starting off at about 1.755 and so I have a decent amount to go for that as well so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to get a piece down to the correct length uh, it's going to involve facing one side and then flipping it and taking the rest of it down to the correct or the specified length so if I go ahead and put the part in the machine, side number one is what you're going to be cutting first. That's just going to be like on the mill where we do our cleanup operations for squaring up. You're just going to take a facing cut on this, maybe 10,000. It's going to be your finish pass. Okay, so I already have my tool set up in the machine, but one thing that you need to double check because we're going to be using this tool for turning and facing, you need to make sure that the point is only going to be touching in both directions. And so if I bring the point up to the part on the X direction and I look straight down from the top I can see right now that only the point of the cutter is actually touching okay, and if I put a piece of paper underneath you might be able to see that it kind of spreads away from the point and then there's a gap that spreads away that's what I want it to look like on the side and then if I position it on the front I want it to look the same and so again only the point is touching now for some reason the whole side is touching you can actually adjust this by loosening the tool post and changing the angle of your tool slightly. Okay, so when I set it up, I just double check, I look, I see that only the point's touching there. I bring it over and I see that only the point is touching there. As long as that's good, I know that I'm good and I make sure my tool post is snugged up. Otherwise, if you have a side contacting in one direction, you're gonna have a problem with that cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my first facing cut, just 10 thousandths or so. So I bring it in, I touch it off just like on the mill. Just gently, okay, I hear it contact, I bring it off of the part. Now you can use your digital readout. We have X and Z digital readout. So if I go ahead and I just hit reset on Z, because I'm taking off the face and that's my length, it's gonna zero it out for me. And so when I go in 10 thousandths, remember we're only paying attention to the first three, just like on the mills. I'm gonna go ahead and go until it's about 0 .010, that's 11 thousandths. We're just cleaning up a side, so that's fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that cut. This is my finished cut, so a nice, consistent feed rate. Notice how I don't just use the hand wheel on this because it makes it hard to stay consistent. I kinda use both hands to keep the feed rate nice and consistent, just like this. All the way to the center, and then back out. Don't stop the machine with the tool contacting the part. Okay, I'm at the center, and I come back out. Also, don't go beyond the center. You don't want to go all the way to the other side. Okay, so I'm back out. My chips fall away. Machine shuts off. I have a nice surface finish right here. Side number one is done. All I was doing there was cleaning it up. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen it up, pull it out, and flip it around. And really what I need right now is a clean side on side number two. So I am actually going to do the same thing on side two and just clean it up. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back in, tighten it up, and do the same thing on side two for right now. Okay, I bring it over, I touch it off, I bring it off, I come in about 10,000 so I can zero this out, I come in about 10. Now in this case, I'm gonna come in maybe about 15, 20, because it's a saw cut, and it's gonna take a little bit more to clean up. So I'm gonna go in about 15, 16. That's good right there. Go ahead and go all the way to the center. And right now, I can probably tell that I'm gonna need to take a little bit more off of this just to get it to clean up. Because if I look at it, still half of it has a big saw cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into about 30 thousandths or so, so 0 .030 right there. And I'm gonna take another cut. All right, 
right, so there's still a little bit of a saw cut, but what I really need is a reference surface to measure. And so I'm going to go ahead and measure it right now. Now, in order to do that, to do it well, especially if you have a longer piece, you're going to need to take the part out. And what that's going to do is make you lose your zero. So in order to get this piece accurate, you're going to have to be very gentle when we retouch this off. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So I take my part out. I measure it make sure that my caliper is all nice and zeroed. It is. Okay, I'm looking to get 2.375 in length. So I double check it. Okay, I'm at 2.420. So in my head, I can do that. That's 25, 35, 45 thousandths I need to take off. So that's 0 0.045. So I'm going to go ahead and put the part back in. But now, just notice, if I go back to zero on my z-axis, I'm not going to be back at the front of the part. So I still need to zero this out. Right now, I'm maybe about 150 thousandths away. So I need to retouch it off, but you can't really take off material because then you're going to affect how much you have left to take, and you're going to end up inaccurate. So I'm going to go ahead and touch it back off. While the machine's running, very gently, so be very careful. You just barely want to see some dust start to fly. Okay, I see a little tiny dust and I hear a little bit, but really it's not really taking much at all. So I'm going to zero that out and I'm going to take off 45 thousandths, but I want to leave about 10 thousandths for my finish pass. So if I have 45 total to take off, I'm going to go ahead and take off 35 right now and then come back and take the last 10. So I'm going to go until it says 0.035. Okay, 0 0.0344, that's fine. It's a little heavier cut, so you can't go as fast with the feed rate. Okay, it's all the way to the center, crank it away, let the chips fall away. All right, if that happens, just shut the machine off and take them off. Don't try to grab those off the part. They'll cut you up. Okay, so they're off. <clears throat> I was at 0 .034, but I know that I have to take 45,000, so I'm going to go to 0 0.045. Now remember, if that last digit's not quite at zero, that's fine. We're really only paying attention to those first three. I'm going to go ahead and take my finish cut on this side. Okay, all the way off. And now I have to take it out to double check it. If I did everything right, I should be right around the 2.375. If I have a tolerance of 5 thousandths, I should be somewhere between 2.370 and 2.380. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on there. And if you look right at the caliper, I got it right on the exact measurement, 2.375. So that's how you would turn it down. You basically want to face one side, take it out, flip it, face the other side, measure it, figure out what you have left to take, and then take the appropriate cuts until you get there. I wouldn't keep taking this out. Maybe take it out once or twice if you have a lot to take off. But every time you take it off, you're kind of messing with your zero a little bit. So figure out, do the math correctly the first time, and then just do the work and get it done. And you can see right there that it works perfectly the way it's supposed to.